Welcome back to Investor Intel for one of the most exciting interviews of the year, and I mean that. Uh, we're lucky today to have Glenn Mullen from PDAC joining us. Glenn, how are you? Very good. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I love this time of the year. It's the two weeks before PDAC, the mining show, also known as Mardi Gras in Sudbury, the greatest show on earth. Um, you must be shoulders deep into it right now. Yeah, no, I love this time of year too, and uh, I'll take it one step further. I look at it like a family barbecue. So, um, you know, the family barbecue brings mean Uncle Bob, so there's the people that you don't want to see. But by and large, out of the 25,000 or more people that'll be there, it's just got a buzz, and it's fun. And PDAC is really all about the networking, and it begins early, ends late. There's lots of diversions and catalysts, and really it's just all about networking and business. It's fabulous. Now, last year, one of the big announcements was the continuation of the flow-through mining credits. Are we expecting to hear anything from the federal government this year? That's always a walk-on eggshells process for the PDAC. So at best, our intelligence tells us that we could be looking at a renewal. Um, mind you, we've been through this process for, I think it's 17 straight years with annual increments, never more than a year at a time. We've been pushing hard to try to get a three-year renewal, so that would allow for better stability, financial planning by a lot of our junior members in particular. Right now, the intelligence is just indicating that we should be having an announcement from the Ministry of Finance during the convention. No guidance on what that may be, so same as last year, walking into it blind. I just got back from New York where we were doing a round of road shows for uh, cobalt assets in Canada. Uh, cobalt in Canada is extremely hot globally right now, and PDAC is mentioned everywhere I go. Uh, about half of the people I met with are coming up for the show. Fantastic. Well, there's always a hot commodity, so it's kind of like mocha java versus vanilla. Um, you pick your flavor. Sometimes they're very temporal and, you know, they don't last. Sometimes it's the beginning of a cycle that's sustainable with the clean technology and clean tech and the green aspects to a lot of our initiatives and the minerals industry. It's probably looking like this is going to be one of the sustainable periods of time where we look at exploration changing focus kind of like the beginning of uranium back in the 1950s and 60s. Right. That lasted for decades. So there's no reason to think that lithium, cobalt, and some of the rare earths won't enjoy that kind of prosperity right now. So do you think uranium's going to have a good year? I think we're all looking at uranium and wondering what happened. Fukushima seems like an awfully long, distant memory. And uh, really, we don't see signs of life there yet. But certainly, the producers, in particular Cameco at the lead of the pack, have taken all the right initiatives. So there's no reason to think that uranium won't come to life as well. Now, PDAC is what the term we use both for the convention and for the organization. Sometimes we use them interchangeably. Um, so PDAC, the organization, always has major initiatives on an annual basis. What are we working on this year? Well, it always begins and ends with the convention, and certainly it's fair to say that most of our members and probably most of the attendees are only familiar with the convention, and they think that's all PDAC is. That's true. Uh, but, yeah, but it's very true, and it was true for myself until I got dragged into it uh, about a decade ago and started to see from a different perspective. But the PDAC actually has a board of directors of just over 30, staff of over 26 in the Toronto office, and that boosts up or ramps up right around now for the convention planning to nearly 100, including the, the volunteers and the, the pre-convention planning, etc. But the big initiatives, um, we've just finished our strategic plan, so that was a good opportunity to have the heart-to-hearts with board members, with executive committee, with the chairs of committees, with key staff and what came out of it this time was an affirmation, I suppose, or reaffirmation of the three biggest priorities from the past decade, Aboriginal affairs being one, access to capital being two, no money, no programs, that's not complicated, and access to land. So those three were reaffirmed, but new on the top five this year would be diversity and innovation. So I don't think that's much of a surprise to anybody from any of the other industries in Canada, but diversity is more than an obligation. It's become something that we have to confront on the public company side as well. 
So there are lots of new guidelines. Some of them are moving towards regulations. We're not quite there yet, but we're trying to be in front of that curve and confront diversity and ask the questions before you're asked what you've done about it. And on the innovation side, again, it takes us back to clean tech, some of the exploration for newer commodities than the market was accustomed to in, in the past, and new exploration techniques. So obviously the technical talks, um, that's a big part along with the short courses of the, right. the PACs draw, the programming. I was out in the bush in June with the geologist and we were working off notes that were using pace and compass. They had not been updated for GPS yet. I was also on a panel in October where they said the two least innovative industries in Canada were agricultural and mining. Why are we so loath to embrace change? I'm not so sure that that's true, but often optics lag, and that's true in any industry. So whether it's aeronautical or pharmaceutical or any other kind of healthcare, sometimes the industry's reputation is either in front or behind of what the reality is. In mining, I think we're pretty good at finding mines. I think we're actually pretty good at using new technology for exploration. Think back to 30 years ago, VLF which was about as basic an exploration technique as ever. Some guy had figured out that you could use submarine tracking signals for mining exploration, and there we were for 10 years running around with VLFs in the bush. Um, you know, that's just one small example, but it's never really changed. We're in front, we're not behind, but we're not so good at telling our stories. So sometimes the optics lag, and I think that's the explanation on that one. Do you think there's more innovation in exploration than in the actual mill and the processing facilities? No, not so much because I'm mindful of, uh, you know, I live in Val d'Or, Quebec. At the bottom of the road is a company called Agnico Eagle Gold X Division. I think of some of the experimental stuff that they've done just on that one mine site, 400 meters from where I live, using uh, rope cables to reduce the weight on skip cages, for instance, mm -hmm. figuring out that two thirds of the weight was related to the cable itself and using that kind of innovation, using a rail veyer for the basic movement of ore internally. Um, the processing side is actually quite innovative and so is exploration, but it really is all motivated by commercial interests. And so sometimes that lags in terms of the marketing. You don't wanna market something that you're not sure will actually be effective. And so there is a lag. You wanna make certain that your new processes are actually effective and cost effective. I'm sure I'll be running into you at some point over the next two weeks at the show, Glenn. Uh, looking forward to taking this further. Thanks for the warning, Peter, and I'll be looking out for you the entire time. Take care and all the best. Thanks. Canada owes a, a huge debt of gratitude to PDAC, and the world owes a huge debt of gratitude to Canada. Uh, the country was built on the backs of miners. We've exported that knowledge, and thanks to you for your help in doing that. Yep, and hope everybody comes to the PDAC in Toronto. Thanks.